Yeah, so uh, today's talk is uh, about getting started with open telemetry in Python. Um, a bit uh, about me. Uh, my name is Moti. I'm a senior engineer at Aspecto, a company that is uh, doing uh, distributed tracing. I've been working with the microservices for the past five years. And recently I started working uh, on the project of open telemetry. Um, so um, what are we going to talk about today? Um, a few things, uh, what are traces? why we need them, how it works, a bit about open telemetry, what it is exactly, um, who's behind it, um, and then how you can get started to, um, today with open telemetry in your Python application. Um, so first of all, the question is why we need traces. Um, so uh, the idea behind traces uh, started with, with the rise of distributed applications and uh, specifically microservices. Um, so uh, there's a problem. It's very hard to debug microservices. Um, so that's why we have traces. So let's uh, look at one example um, uh, that we have. We're getting an error from a service. Um, service A cannot write to a database. We have one service communicating with another service. It can Right, for some reason, getting this error. Um, so we have logs that show an exception. We have metrics that show some high CPU usage in the database. Um, so we're starting to ask ourselves some questions. What is causing this uh, exception? What is the reason behind it? Um, so it might be an increase in traffic. So then if it's an increase in traffic, we want to know, OK, what route is causing it? Uh, maybe it's a messaging system, maybe it's uh, uh, somewhere else. Um, and, and this is a problem that is very hard to solve. So let's look at, uh, at a diagram here. So this is service A. Um, as you can all see, it's communicating with this database, database one. Um, but then we have also service B that is communicating with service A. And we also have service C that is communicating with service A that is communicating with the database. Um, so logs tell us there's an error at service A. We can't write to the database. We have metrics that tell us, oh, the CPU is very high uh, in the database. It tells us why this is happening. Um, so traces, what trace gives us is the context to what is happening, the path um, from the, throughout the entire system. So the, a trace would go from service B, let's say if service B made the request, so we'll have, a, a, we'll have a request from service B, we'll see as a request coming out from service C, we'll see it uh, received in service A, and then we'll see it going out to the database. So we can follow and see, oh, this is the route in service B that is causing um, our errors in the database. Um, so how does it actually look? Um, this is a screenshot from uh, uh, the platform that Aspecto is building. So you can actually see here how a trace looks like in our system. Um, we can see a request going out throughout different phases, different messaging systems, databases, and you actually have a timeline that shows you in order what is happening in your system and exactly where it was going. And you can actually see the, um, the payload of the information. Let's say if it's a DB statement, you can see the DB statement. You can understand from that DB statement, what is causing uh, the error? Um, so what is open telemetry? Um, open telemetry is basically uh, uh, mostly a specification, how to write traces. It tells you what information they should include, what they should not include. And it also gives you um, an API and an SDK in almost every programming language. So they have an SDK for Python, they have for .NET, for Node.js, any, any, almost any language that exists. And basically it gives you the tools to implement in your application and start collecting uh, trace data in any language. And they have a few other parts. They have a part that is a collector that basically uh, uh, for your backend, so you can deploy it and send your traces from your application to an open telemetry collector and have uh, the traces then 
sent to a database or wherever you may you can send it to some vendor or you can sell it to send it to a specto and we can store it for you um so we saw that graph um but let's understand a bit how it actually works uh behind the scenes um so let's look at an example like we saw before we have a service talking a service i'm talking about a microservice communicating let's say with http so we have service a service a is getting requests from the internet he's sending another request to service b which is communicating with this database um so in order to generate trace data well i have to have uh, open telemetry the sdk installed on service a and on service b and the way it works is um Service A, once we get a request, the Open Telemetry SDK would inject um, a context, some ID and some information to the headers, and then uh, would, we'll have the um, the service. Uh, the SDK would send an API and a call to the backend to your uh, Open Telemetry collector um, that would say, "I called Service B." Um, I have no parent, I have a trace ID, and that would be saved there. And then service B would send a request to the backend saying, I got an API call from service one. It has a trace ID one, it has a span ID, and then the parent ID is this span ID we saw before. So that's how we can actually link it. And then when we do a query to the database, we're also going to generate this event that says, uh, I did a DB query with the trace ID is one, parent is this span ID. And then we can actually have all this information organized in kind of a tree. And that's how in the back end we know to display it and connect all of these different uh, events that are happening in your system, system and actually combine them into a complete trace. And this is uh, uh, actually what a trace is. It's a collection of different events um, that are called spans uh, in open telemetry, and uh, they all share an ID, and that together creates a trace. Um, so that's that's in general uh, uh, sense how uh, open telemetry works. Um, in different uh, systems, it works a bit differently. If it's messaging systems uh, or lambda functions, uh, it works a bit differently. Um, so uh, what, what traces help us, help us understand why something failed or why it understands, help us understand if a system behaves the way we accept, expect it or not. Um, and, and basically it helps us uh, to improve the mean time to recover. Um, so it's actually pretty simple to install in Python specifically uh, open telemetry. It's only a few commands. Um, you have uh, you install a few uh, uh, packages and then you run your app with Open Telemetry, Python, and then the app name. So I created a, a, an example I want to show you. Um, let me share this screen instead. Um, so I have here a simple uh, application in Python. I have a user service that is basically a route that returns a user profile. And I have here a to-do service that basically is an app that returns me to-dos that it's calling an external API. And it's calling also the user service to get a user. Um, and it's a simple uh, uh, Docker Compose that sets up the services and it configures the endpoint to where to send uh, the data. I'm using uh, specifically Jaeger as it's a very popular backend, open source backend to store um, open telemetry data. Um, so I'm just going to start this. Um, and it starts really quickly. Um, and let's see how it actually looks. Um, so 
Mexico. It's running on uh, localhost 500. And let's say I'm calling the to-do endpoint. And you can see I got a list of to-dos back from the service. Um, so, but now I wanna see how the trace data that I generated, how does it look for this service? So for that, we can go into Jaeger. Jaeger is also an open source project um, that is uh, um, basically um, runs on, on my machine as a container. Um, and I can go there and I want to see now the request that I just created. Let's see how it looks like. So you can see we have, it recognizes all the services that I, even though I did one request, it knows that it went throughout the to-do and the user service. Uh, let's say I want to find the traces and look at this. I have here a trace that says it involves also the to-do service and also the user service. And if I go into it, I can actually see visually what happened. First in my application, I can see I got a request, an HTTP request, an HTTP GET request. I did an HTTP GET request. Um, to get the user profile from the user service, and then I returned it to the user. So it's very easy to set up, very easy to, to implement in your services. Um, and the, the outcome is pretty cool, in my opinion. Um, so that's uh, what you need to do to get started with open telemetry today. Um, we also have a lot of resources about open telemetry and how you should get started. So we have the open telemetry bootcamp. It's actually a, a series of, uh, I think it's uh, 10 videos. Uh, let's see, uh, I'm not sure, but it's um, six videos um, going through everything you need to deploy uh, open telemetry in your application in production um, throughout uh, uh, different microservices, different languages, collector databases, everything you need. Um, I also included here a link, uh, the list of all frameworks uh, that OpenTelemetry supports uh, for Python. So almost every um, library um, that you use is supported. If it's Celery for uh, tasks, uh, if it's uh, gRPC, MySQL, um, almost every uh, big library is supported and it knows how to generate uh, trace data. Um, so if you have a question about if a library is supported or not, you can go to open telemetry registry and check if it, if it shows up in this list. If not, you can also create an issue for open telemetry. Um, uh, Bit a word about uh, Open Telemetry. Open Telemetry is a project that sits under CNCF, uh, which is the cloud native organization that is behind Kubernetes and a lot of other um, big open source projects. Um, it's uh, uh, it's open source. It's maintained by by the community, um, so you should uh, feel free to go and and check it out. It's a GitHub at Open Telemetry. Um, and that's it. 